All right, we've come to a very important lesson. Not that they aren't all important. But the lesson on prayer is very important, for, especially for you as parents. But what I want to start with uh, is speaking about why we pray to begin with. <clears throat> and it's actually very simple. Anyone who's ever been in any relationship knows that one of the key components of a relationship is communication. So if we're going to have a relationship with God, and we are supposed to have a relationship with God, we've been created for a relationship with God, then we need to pray. I mean, we owe God prayer. We owe him the worship that comes from our prayer for many reasons, but we also pray in order to continue uh, to uh, form and to grow in this relationship with him. The thing is, though, we have to learn how to pray. Basic prayers, prayers from the heart, uh, is something that we can all do, and this is why children pray better than us sometimes. But there are nuances, and as we know that, that relationships are complicated and there's very aspects, various aspects to our relationships, then those various aspects are also part of our prayer life. So we need to understand prayer in order to grow in prayer. Uh, let's start then with the ends of prayer. Ends is the classical term for purpose, uh, why something is. So the four ends of prayer are adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Adoration, contrition, or and reparation, thanksgiving, and supplication, or petition, asking. So these ends of prayer, uh, in English at least, form the nice acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, which can help us remember it, and they're especially important. This is not just an academic idea. The, the importance of having or knowing what the four ends of prayer is is that with these ends of prayer, we can pray anywhere and at any time uh, as simply um, turning our hearts and minds to God uh, in adoration, asking forgiveness for our sins, particularly in the moment when we commit them, thanking God for things, and again, in the moment even, and asking God for the things that we need. <clears throat> the reason we use the definition elevation of the heart and mind to God is very important because we don't want to simply uh, stay at the level where we think of prayer as talking to God. One of the reasons for that is because silence is a very important part of prayer, and particularly um, if you know anyone who's been married for a long time, who have been in a relationship for a long time, you know that talking is not always necessary, that being simply being in one's presence is, necess is, is necessary. But also silence, especially when it comes to God, because our communication with God is different from our communication with creatures, is um, that we also have to listen. Not that God speaks to us always in clear words, but uh, part of that is the fact that we have to be disposed to listening before we hear anything. Another aspect of prayer, which is very important right off the bat that we should mention, is what's called the practice of the presence of God. Again, the definition of prayer is not just talking with God. It's elevating the heart and mind to God, or in the, as we're using this phrase, practicing the presence of God, it's simply recognizing the fact that he's here, He's always here. He's always with us. And in the baptized soul in a state of grace, he's in our soul. So practicing the presence of God is our practicing uh, our behavior, that is, our attentiveness, our, our listening, and our speaking to him as if he's always present because he is present to us. And finally, before I say anything more about types of prayer or, or contents of prayer, I think it's very important that we consider uh, the consecration of time. Uh, too many Christians have a wrong idea about um, what a prayer life should look like, and the fact is, is it's, it's very simple in one sense. There's various different types of prayer, and each of these kinds of prayer uh, are prayed in different circumstances and take certain amounts of time. And the point is that uh, we consecrate our time all of our time to God, and we pray depending on the circumstances. So there are times when we pray larger things, longer prayers, etc., more formal prayers, uh, and then there are times where we don't have as much time, and we pray smaller prayers, and then there's the little prayers that we say constantly, raising our heart and minds to God no matter what we're doing. So what we do is it's an art even to learn how to keep up this conversation with God based on the circumstances that we're in. 
Let's talk then a little bit uh, about more formal prayer, and especially formulaic prayer. One of the very important points to remember is, is that um, when Jesus was asked to teach his disciples how to pray, he gave them a memorized formula, well, a formula, the Our Father. And that is one of the many prayers that we memorize. So formulaic prayer, formal prayer, is a good thing, uh, and we shouldn't dismiss it just because um, it doesn't feel as personal. It's important, and it's the way God wants us to pray, at least in part. And with that comes the fact that we should have uh, prayers memorized. <clears throat> Praying, uh, memorizing prayers is very important because when we're stressed um, or when we don't know what to pray, then we have prayers like the Our Father, the Hail Mary, these other prayers that we, that we memorize as Christians that we can use in these times, which are just as valuable, uh, and in a lot of cases more valuable because they're not just our words and we're, we are humbly using other, others' words and words of holier people um, in order to express ourselves to God. Some of the formal prayers that uh, we may be already familiar with, of course, uh, and that we needs to be in some way part of our regular formal prayer is obviously, of course, Holy Mass. Holy Mass is the, the greatest of our formal ritual uh, prayers and worship of God. The Psalter of the Bible, the Book of Psalms, is prayed regularly officially by the church and can also be prayed by us. Other devotional prayers that we have, the litanies that we pray, short aspirations, those little one-line prayers, and of course the Holy Rosary. So these are all formal and uh, in many cases memorized prayers that we should be using. But of course, on the other side is we have personal prayer. All our prayer uh, does not need to be in uh, other people's words. There needs to be time when we're raising our heart and mind to God, whether that be in formal meditation, where we're thinking about a subject and talking to God about it, or when we are simply conversing with him informally as we go about our day. Both of those are very important. So having both the formal, formal prayer and the personal prayer. Part of the both formal and personal prayer, which all of us should have as Christians, is adoration of the most blessed sacrament. Jesus has given himself to us, not only spiritually, not only in our hearts, but even in a physical sacramental way, and he waits in our tabernacles uh, for us and to spend time with us. Again, not merely spiritually, but even physically. And so, whether it be a short visit to the Blessed Sacrament as we're passing by, or if we stop and, and take formal time to, to pray a holy hour or more, uh, we really want to make sure that we're including a time of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in our prayer lives. And finally, I want to address just briefly a couple of points on difficulties in prayer. For example, dryness. Uh, dryness is something that many people experience. Sometimes this is uh, purposeful on God's part because he wants us to keep praying even when we don't feel good about it. It makes us grow and show our love uh, more. Um, but dryness can also be because of our own lack of love, our own tepidity, our lukewarmness. And so that's something to be aware of. Same thing with distractions. Distractions, they're very natural. Everyone has them. Um, and we just need to simply learn how to deal with them. Most often, uh, we simply turn the distraction into a theme for our prayer, if we're able to do so at the moment, uh, but we certainly, don't, uh, we certainly dismiss them, and we never let them get us down, because it's our attempt to prayer and our desire to spend time with God that's important, and even if we're fighting distraction the whole time, it's still good prayer. And finally, a lot of people have trouble with the idea of God not answering prayers. <clears throat> and this is founded on the fact, very simply, that we don't always ask for what we need, what we really need. Our desires are not always in line with God's will. So God always answers our prayers in one of three ways. One is he'll say yes. Another is he'll say not yet. And that's a very important one for patience. But then the third one is I have something better in mind. The fact is, is that God knows what's best for us, and he wants us to ask for our daily bread. That's good for us on the, on the part of humility, but we also need to accept the fact that if he does not grant something, then he knows what he's doing, and he loves us more than we can imagine and will take care of us, even if us not getting what we ask for in the moment seems to be a problem or an evil uh, and not in God's plan. So, I said, hopefully at the beginning of this, that 
Um, it's very important that we teach our children, but obviously it's very important that we ourselves have a good prayer life. And for those of you who may not uh, have a good prayer life at the moment, uh, this is a good opportunity to, to relook our prayer lives uh, as we're helping our children, is to learn from the process of helping our children and teaching our children and trying to develop that, to set a good example for them and to bring them with you as you grow closer to Christ uh, in your prayer life.